Welcome to the fourth edition of the Nobel Leaders League Review Preview Magazine. I am Jot Like. Today we have the review of the third league round. We'll continue after that by taking a look at the updated war table, leader ratings, Adels calendar, top six cities, and total tables. Finally, a preview of round four of the league. Now, the headlines. While it was just short of going top of the league, Huao the second's turn 395 domination win versus Pericles, that put him into second with a positive 35 score turn difference, was a joyful experience. His score turn 4 totals 60 points, averaging 20 per game. That is the highest in the league so far. However, experts are agreeing that it is unsustainable for the whole season. A very positive start though. It is his space race win in round 1, where he conceded 13 score turn, hosting Mansa Musa, that keeps him behind Asuka in the league. But with games against out of form Pakal II and Huayna Kapak up next, his fans are confident that Huao will be top of the league sooner rather than later. Mansa Musa was not reckoned to be in the top half of the table, but his early season form is still a disappointment. A turn 342 domination defeat at Hannibal is just the last of three defeats. In the first two games, he at least lasted until the 2020s. That is turn 440 something. Zero points. Rock bottom of the table with a negative 32 score turn difference, which is worst in the league, and no particularly easy games coming his way anytime soon. One could argue that Peter, Chin Chi Wang, Gilgamesh, and Willem van Oranje are easier fixtures than Huao the Second, Pericles, and Hannibal, but they are still first division leaders with some pedigree as emperors. The season is still young though. There are many games to be played. But if Mansa is to find himself in a top half finish, he needs to show something more than what he's been giving us until now. Surya Varman II's turn 392 conquest of Buddhika earned him the honor of becoming total for the first time this season. After a domination and two conquest wins, he has only conceded one score turn in his first three games. That is the best in the league. His score turn difference of 38 is second only to Roosevelt, who has 39. His next three opponents, Louis XIV, Hatshepsut and Kublai Khan, hasn't had the best of starts. All of them in the bottom half of the table after the third round. Sir Varman II has a golden opportunity to get a head start on his toughest competitors for promotion, if he can stay on course and not falter in these games where he'll be expected to take home three wins. Genghis Khan did enough to win a turn 272 conquest against the Gol. The Gol tumbled down from the number one spot while Genghis climbed into second place. This left the top spot open for Montezuma. The Aztec leader drew at home to Brennus to achieve his first total. It was Genghis that impressed the most in Division 3 this round, with his dethronement of the goal. Still undefeated with two wins and a draw on five points with a positive 13 score turn difference. With Sitting Bull, Lincoln and Stalin up next, it is likely that Genghis Khan can find himself top of the league in the near future. Montezuma have Mehmed II and the Gol up in his next two. That is a tougher fixture list than what the Khan has. First Division The fourth round in the first division saw six home wins, three away wins and no draws. The closest we got to a draw was when Cyrus needed 444 turns to win culture hosting Chin Chi Wang. Ahsoka, Huao II, Julius Caesar and Hannibal are top 4 in that order. 
with six points in three games after yet another win each. Saladin, Catherine, Cyrus and Justinian I follows on four points, also after winning their round three games. As Willem van Oranje is up to ninth place after his win at Peter, with Peter in tenth, it means that all nine round three winners are top nine, while all nine round three losers are bottom nine in the table. A fact most extraordinary indeed. For the record, Asuka retains his total while Suleiman, Huaynekapak and Mansa Musa are in the relegation three positions. Second division. Suryavarman II and Bismarck have a perfect three wins in three in division two. Washington is one point behind the top two after his turn 3-5-6 Diplo win hosting Hatshepsut. We saw one draw in the division. Charlemagne versus Augustus Sassar. Charlemagne still without a win, Augustus Sassar without a defeat. Both leaders have drawn twice so far. There were no extraordinary big wins, but a lot of solid ones. After this round, Surya Varman II and Bismarck are in promotion, Washington, Roosevelt, Augustus Sassar and Victoria are in the playoffs, while Gandhi, Mao Zedong and Kublai Khan will be relegated unless they climb the table. Third Division Montezuma draw Brennus to climb above the goal and become the new total. An achievement worth mentioning for the 52nd ranked leader. His fans must take their time to enjoy these days, as it is not expected that he'll stay top of the league for very long. There are more leaders struggling to win their games in this division than in the two divisions above. As expected, since they are considered among the weakest in the league. The eight games in round three ended with four home wins, three draws and one away win. All three leaders that failed to win from a strong position played at home. Frederick, with a final score turn of 11-6 versus Alexander, Elizabeth 15-5 versus Stalin, and Montezuma 9-3 versus Brennus. They had the initiative, but just couldn't get the killing blow to finish off their opponents. While no leaders have won all of their opening three games, there are two that have lost the first three, Tokugawa and Sitting Bull. While both of them are expected to lose in round four, Tokugawa visiting the Gol and Sitting Bull hosting Genghis Khan, they meet in Japan for their round five fixture. I am excited to see which one will get his first win there. Montezuma and Genghis Khan are in the two promotion places, while De Gaulle, Brennus, Shaka and Ragnar occupies the four playoff spots after round three. Sitting Bull is bottom of the league for the second round running. Four leaders remain with a perfect victory ratio of one after the third round. Asuka, Wow the second, Hannibal and Bismarck. Montezuma holds a number of most number of records after this round. Most wars, 21. Most victories, 11. Most stalemates, 5. And most cities captured, 39. His victory ratio is 0.524. Most turns in war is Shaka with 717, which also means he has had the highest percentage of turns in war compared to turns played, 58.5%. Only one other leader has had more than half of the total turns in war. Boudicca, 58%, 697 out of 1202 turns. One leader hasn't been in war at all, that is Washington, and 13 other leaders have been in war, but never victoriously. Top 4 in the leader ratings are the same as the top 4 in the first division table, but in the ratings, Wow the second is above Asuka. Wow the second, 
1571, Asuka 1570, Julius Caesar 1568, and Hannibal 1564 are above the two top leaders from the second division. Both Bismarck and Suryavarman II have 1560 points in fifth place. At the bottom we find the three bottom leaders from the first division. Suleiman 1436, Mansa Musa 1432 and Huayna Kapak 1431. After her diplo win in round 3, Catherine is top of the Adels calendar with 2139 points. Bismarck is second with 2146 and Churchill third with 2155. 13 leaders have yet to win a game and is still on 2500 points at the bottom of the calendar. Top of the first division top 6 cities leaderboard we find Asuka on 75 points. Julius Caesar is second and Willem van Oranje third with 67 and 52 points respectively. Pakal II and Shinji Wang are the only two leaders not having had a number one city yet. Suleiman is bottom of the table with 15 points. The second division leaderboard is led by Surya Varman II with a perfect 78 points. Augustus Caesar in second with 69, Bismarck third with 67 points. Three leaders are still without a number one city, Washington, surprisingly as he has not yet lost the game, Kublai Khan and Mao Zedong. Mao is at the bottom with only three points. Montezuma is the one with the perfect 78 points in the third division. Four leaders follows on 52 points, Brennus, Genghis Khan, Mehmed II and Shaka. Alexander and Sitting Bull has not had a number one city in this division. Sitting Bull is bottom with only four points. Asuka retains his first division total in the third round with the slightest of margins as he has score turn difference one point better than Huao the second. It cannot be much closer without the two leaders sharing first position, which while not very likely is technically possible. In the second division Sir Varman II takes over as total after Roosevelt lost his game this round. Sir Varman is hoping for a long and total rich season from now on. Also, the third division saw a new leader emerge as total when Montezuma drew to go top when the goal lost at Genghis Khan and dropping down to third. No matter what happens from now on, Montezuma has written history as being the first ever bottom ranked leader to go top of the third division. Round 4 Previews First Division Gilgamesh is visited by Suleiman in the first round 4 fixture of the first division. With only one point between them, we can say that they've not had the best of starts. It was Gilgamesh that drew at Willem in his second game that secured him one point, currently in 14th place. Suleiman is at 16th, below the relegation line. Mansa Musa is bottom of the division after three defeats with a league worst negative 32 score turn difference. He receives a visit from Peter. Peter is 10th with three points after a good start. While he did lose culture to Willem in the last game, his form tells us he's not going to be the whipping boy that his preseason rank suggested. Willem van Oranje is up against Justinian I. They are neighbors in the table, with Willem in 9th with 3 points and Justinian 8th with 4. Justinian I has had some score turn problems despite winning two games. This could be a sign that he's going to have a few problems, living up to his preseason rank of second. Sara Jakob takes on Huayna Kapak in a game between two leaders having disappointed in their opening games. Sara is 13th with two points after his opening day win followed by two defeats. Huayna Kapak is even worse off with three losses and zero points down in 17th. I see no standout favorite here. 
Catherine and Cyrus has both done well, winning two and losing one in the first three rounds. Both are on four points with only score turn difference separating them, with Catherine sixth and Cyrus seventh in the table. Will Cyrus overtake Catherine by taking home a win from Russia? Chin Shi Wang is visited by Hannibal. Chin is 12th with 2 points, while Hannibal is 4th with 6. This could be a tougher game for Hannibal than what the table suggests. Both of Chin's losses were cultural, and he has not yet had a negative score turn difference in any single game. Julius Sazar is hosting Saladin. Julius is 3rd with 6 points, Saladin 5th with 4 after he found back to his winning ways in round 3. Between them they have only lost 1 out of 6 games, so I expect some fireworks and action in this one. Pakal II is visited by Huao II. I don't think either of them wants to come in second in this game. Pakal is 15th in the league with 1 point, having lost his last 2 games after an opening day draw. Huao is in a better place with 6 points from 3 wins and a 2nd place in the table. Form says Huao the 2nd is a clear favourite here, and I can hardly disagree. In the last game of the round, Pericles hosts 1st division total Asuka. Asuka on 6 points with 3 wins while Pericles has 2 points in 11th place. Many feel that Pericles was robbed of his opening day win, though, as he was dominant in the game where Justinian I snatched a cultural victory from the jaws of defeat. If Pericles had won that instead, he would have been 5th in the table and this would look like a closer call than what it currently does. Don't underestimate the host's chances in this. Game. Second division. Gandhi is host for Mao Zedong in the first second division game of the round. Both leaders on one point and both leaders in the relegation zone. Gandhi in 16th, Mao in 17th. Is this an early days relegation battle? Or will both of them rise to the occasion and get themselves out of trouble? Isabella gets a visit from Hammurabi. Isabella is 10th with 2 points, Samurabi 9th with 3 points. I can see this go either way. Ramses II hosts Charlemagne, 14th place with 2 points for the host, 13th place with 2 points for the visitor. Ramses II is the only one having won a game, Charlemagne's points come from 2 draws. Ramses did win culture at Kublai Khan, so unless Charlemagne can find a way to win this game, he is vulnerable to a Ramses II cultural attempt. Victoria receives Wang Kon in England. She has 4 points in 6th place, while Wang Kon sits on 2 points in 12th. Victoria probably needs a win to stay in the top 6, as there are leaders behind her that would love to climb into the playoffs themselves. Augustus Sassar takes on Kublai Khan in Rome the visitor pointless after three defeats, the host undefeated after a win and two draws. Augustus is fifth with his four points, while Kublai sits at the bottom of the table, being the only Division II leader without a point. Hatshepsut is hosting Roosevelt, she is eleventh with two points, while Roosevelt is fourth with four points after his round three defeat. Both of them have lost to Bismarck this season, Will Roosevelt find his way back to domination victories, or will he be swayed by the bling bling of Hatshepsut the same way he fell for Bismarck's? Bismarck is on home soil as he takes on Churchill, second place with 6 points from 3 games, versus 4 point Churchill in 8. Churchill's only defeat came when visiting division leader Sir Varman II. This is a game I would rather avoid putting forward a favourite in. I'm excited for the game and looking forward to seeing what will happen. Budika is hosting Washington. She is 7th with 4 points while Washington is 3rd with 5. While not highly likely, should both Bismarck and Suri Varman II lose, Washington would go top with a win here. What more would you want for motivation before a game? 
The final game of the division is between Louis XIV and Sir Varman II. Louis is 15th with 2 points after he finally got himself a win last game. His cultural win at Mao Zedong lifted him out of the bottom 3. How he is planning to get something from the game against the total is not clear at the moment. Sir Varman II has brushed all opponents aside with 2 conquest and 1 domination win this far. I cannot see much hope for this game to end in any other way. Third division. Stalin opens the fourth round of fixtures as he is visited by Shaka, 14th in the table with 2 points after 2 draws and a loss versus a Shaka in 5th with 4 points. If Stalin can get on Shaka's good side, this game could end up going everywhere. But if Shaka gets angry and declares a war early, there is either sink or swim for the Zulu leader. I would bet on him to swim. Darius I is hosting Elizabeth. Darius is 12th with 2 points, Elizabeth 8th with 3. Both of these leaders have lost Diplo to Lincoln and both have played Stalin. Darius I won conquest on turn 350 while Elizabeth failed to win as the time deadline came too soon. She was dominating the game versus Stalin though. Alexander takes on Ragnar in round 3. Alexander is 11th with 3 points, Ragnar 6th with 4. Ragnar won his last game after opening the season with 2 draws. Alexander hasn't won since his round 1 Diplo win at Tokugawa. Both have draws against Frederick this season. Alexander was losing score turn wise as he held on to his point while Ragnar had a slight advantage 9 to 8 when his game came to a close. This is an open game. Lincoln hosts Napoleon. Lincoln is 7th with 4 points, Napoleon 10th with 3. However, both of Lincoln's wins were Diplo. Once he met a warmonger in Shaka, he lost a turn 469 domination. Knowing Napoleon, I'll hold the visitor as favorite in this game. Brennus is visited by Frederick. Brennus is 4th in the league with 4 points and is undefeated after a win and 2 draws. Frederick is 13th with 2 points from 2 draws and a loss. While the visitor hasn't won a game yet, there are signs that the first one is right around the corner. His performance, score turn wise, has improved for every game. In his last versus Alexander, he had the advantage as time caught up with him for a draw. Brennus is still favorite here though. He has draws against Genghis Khan and Montezuma while winning conquest at home to Tokugawa. The goal is the one taking on Tokugawa in this round, losing the total after the defeat at Genghis Khan and dropping down to third with 4 points. It's not enough for me to lose confidence in the French leader, especially not when he is up against Tokugawa on 0 points in 15th place. This should be a clear win for the host. Sitting Bull's troubles are expected to continue as he is hosting Genghis Khan. Bottom of the table on 0 points, Genghis is second with 5 points after his win versus the goal. It will be a surprise if this game ends in anything else than a clear Genghis Khan victory. Mehmed II is hosting the new 3rd division total Montezuma. Mehmed is 9th in the table with 3 points. An early turn 309 conquest win at Tokugawa last game was Mehmed's first win of the season. Can he carry the momentum forward when Monty comes visiting? For the record, Montezuma is on 5 points and a positive 20 score turn difference in 1st place. This has been volume 4 of the NNL RPM. The 4th round of fixtures of the NLL is starting Monday, May 31st. Hope to see you there. Have a good week. I am Hjotlaik, signing off.